Welcome back to Notarize by Christy. In this video, we will review Louisiana notarial practice through an advanced quiz. Here are 10 scenario-based, multiple-choice questions meant to prepare you for the actual exam. This will be interactive, so get out your pen and paper. In the first section of this video, we will present you with each of the 10 questions one by one and provide enough time for you to think about how you would answer. Press pause when you need more time on any particular question. Write down your answers as we go along. At the end of the video, we will present the correct answer to each question. Ready? Let's start. Question one, you're a notary in Louisiana tasked with notarizing a cash sale document for a movable property in St. Tammany Parish. What's the most crucial step in this process? A, A, ensure the document has been signed by both the buyer and seller in your presence. B, attach a notarial seal indicating your commission number and parish C. Record the transaction in both your notarial register and with the parish recorder of deeds, D. Verify the identities of the signatories through personal knowledge or satisfactory evidence. Question two, a couple approaches you to notarize a mandate, power of attorney authorizing one to sell a property on the other's behalf. The principal is physically unable to appear before you to sign the mandate. Which of the following actions should you take? Why A. Refuse to notarize the document since the principal cannot personally appear before you. B. Direct a third party to sign the document on the principal's behalf in your presence. C. Use a detailed affidavit from a medical professional to substitute for the principal's physical appearance. D. Arrange for a hospital visit or use of technology to facilitate the principal's appearance before you, if permissible under Louisiana law. Question 3. You are asked to notarize a succession document that includes the transfer of immovable property. The document has been signed in your absence but requires notarization for it to be considered valid under Louisiana law. What is the most appropriate course of action? Notarize the document as long as you can confirm the signatory's identities and the document's purpose. B. Require all parties to re-sign the document in your presence before applying your notarial seal. C. Suggest that an attorney review the document before notarization, given the complexity of succession laws in Louisiana. D. Record the document in your notarial register and proceed with notarization as long as the signatories can provide valid identification. Question 4. A client asks you to notarize a matrimonial agreement that stipulates the division of property between the parties in the event of a divorce. What must be considered to ensure the document is properly notarized according to Louisiana notarial practice? A. The agreement must be signed in the presence of two witnesses and the notary. B. The document must include a detailed list of the properties to be divided, certified by a licensed appraiser. C. You must ensure that the document is recorded in the parish where the couple resides. D. The notary must advise the parties on the legal implications of the agreement before notarization. Question 5. In executing a juridical act involving the donation of immovable property, which of the following is a requirement for the act to be validly notarized under Louisiana law? A. The act must explicitly state that it is a donation inter vivos and be accepted by the donee in the presence of the notary and two witnesses. B. The donor must provide proof of ownership and a recent property appraisal at the time of donation. C. The document must be filed with the Louisiana Department of Revenue and the Parish Recorder of Deeds within 30 days of execution. A detailed inventory of the donor's remaining assets must be attached to ensure the donor retains sufficient property to cover debts. Question 6. A notary public in Louisiana is presented with a document for notarization that involves the acknowledgement of a debt by a debtor to a creditor. 
The document includes a confession of judgment clause that allows the creditor to obtain a judgment without further legal action if the debtor defaults. What must the notary ensure before notarizing the document? A. The debtor has received independent legal advice regarding the confession of judgment clause. B. The document is signed in the presence of two witnesses in addition to the notary. C. A copy of the document is immediately filed with the local court upon notarization. D. The interest rate specified in the document does not exceed the state's usury limit. Question 7. You are a Louisiana notary asked to notarize a lease agreement for a term exceeding one year. According to Louisiana law, which of the following is true about notarizing this document? A. The lease must be acknowledged in the presence of two witnesses, who must also sign the document. B. The document requires registration with the parish recorder of deeds to be enforceable. C. A lease agreement for more than one year can only be notarized by an attorney licensed in Louisiana. D. The lessee and lesser must provide proof of property insurance before the document can be notarized. Question 8. A client presents a trust agreement for notarization, wherein they wish to transfer immovable property to a trust. As a notary in Louisiana, what is an essential step you must ensure is completed for the trust agreement involving immovable property to be valid? A. The trust agreement must specify the conditions under which the property can be sold. B. B. A detailed inventory of the trust's assets, including the immovable property, must be attached to the agreement. C. The agreement must be notarized in the presence of two witnesses and then recorded in the parish where the property is located. D. The trustee must provide a bond equal to the value of the immovable property being transferred to the trust. Question 9. You are approached to notarize a prenuptial agreement in Louisiana. The document outlines the separation of assets and financial arrangements between the parties in the event of divorce or death. What must be ensured for the notarization of this document to be valid? A. The document must be signed by the parties at least 30 days before the marriage ceremony. B. Each party must have had the opportunity to seek independent legal counsel before signing. C. The agreement must include a clause that it is subject to approval by a family court judge. D. It must be recorded with the parish recorder of deeds within 10 days of notarization. Question 10. A Louisiana notary is asked to notarize a revocation of a power of attorney that was previously granted. The principal who granted the power is now incapacitated. Which of the following is the correct procedure? A. Proceed with notarization as long as the revocation is signed by a legal representative of the incapacitated principal. B. The notarization can only be performed if a court order authorizing the revocation is presented. C. Notarize the document after verifying that the power of attorney includes a clause that allows for revocation in case of the principal's incapacity. D. Refuse to notarize the revocation since the principal cannot express their current intentions due to incapacity. Let's see how you did! Here are the answers. The answer to question 1 is A. Ensure the document has been signed by both the buyer and seller in your presence. This is crucial because it directly impacts the legality and enforceability of the sale, ensuring that both parties are willingly entering into the agreement. The answer to question two is D. Arrange for a hospital visit or use of technology to facilitate the principal's appearance before you if permissible under Louisiana law. This method ensures that the notarization process respects the principal's rights and needs while still following the legal requirements. The answer to question 3 is B. Require all parties to resign the document in your presence before applying your notarial seal. In Louisiana, witnessing the act of signing is fundamental for the notarization of documents, especially those with significant legal implications like successions involving immovable property.
The answer to question four is A. The agreement must be signed in the presence of two witnesses and the notary. Louisiana law requires matrimonial agreements to be executed in the presence of two witnesses and a notary, ensuring the agreement's validity and enforceability. The answer to question five is A. The act must explicitly state that it is a donation inter vivos and be accepted by the donee in the presence of the notary and two witnesses. For a donation of immovable property to be valid, it must explicitly be declared as such and accepted by the donee in the presence of a notary and two witnesses. The answer to question six is B, the document is signed in the presence of two witnesses in addition to the notary. The critical element in notarizing such a document involves witnessing the signing by the debtor and creditor in the presence of two witnesses and the notary. The answer to question seven is A, the lease must be acknowledged in the presence of two witnesses who must also sign the document. In Louisiana, notarizing a lease agreement for a term exceeding one year requires acknowledgement in the presence of two witnesses in addition to the notary to ensure the document's formal validity. The answer to question eight is C, the agreement must be notarized in the presence of two witnesses and then recorded in the parish where the property is located. For a trust agreement involving immovable property to be valid, it's crucial that the agreement is notarized in the presence of two witnesses and subsequently recorded in the parish where the property is located. The answer to question nine is B, each party must have had the opportunity to seek independent legal counsel before signing. It's imperative that each party has had the opportunity to seek independent legal advice before signing a prenuptial agreement. This ensures that both parties fully understand the agreement's implications, contributing to its fairness and enforceability. The answer to question 10 is B, the notarization can only be performed if a court order authorizing the revocation is presented. If the principal is incapacitated, a notary must ensure that there is a legal basis, such as a court order, for the revocation of the power of attorney. This step is crucial to protect the principal's interests and ensure the legality of the revocation. How did you do? Share your thoughts, questions, or experiences in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content like this. See you next time!